Our current guest on Ticket Volume is an active SDI Chief Transformation Officer, Head of AI Graduate Programs at Universidad La Sal in Mexico, a board member at ACISIT, developing consulting strategies, planning and delivery, professor at actuarial science faculty STEM, Anuak, and I'll ask him how to pronounce that later, and chairman and owner of BP Gurus. Welcome to Ticket Volume, news and information for improving IT experiences, powered by Invigate. Welcome to Ticket Volume, Mauricio. Matt, thank you so much for the invitation. I'm thrilled to be here with you. Oh, you're so kind. So how did I mispronounce that university name? No, oh, that's good. That's good. It's uh, in, in Spanish, it's uh, La Salle University, and the other one would be Anahuac University, but yes, that's good. Hey, I tried. I'm not a native Spanish speaker, but I'm trying every day, dude. <laughs> you, you, you're doing it really good. Thank you so much. You're so encouraging. So what I think is awesome about you, Mauricio, or one of the reasons that I try to keep you close to me at all times is you are, you're like the ITSM globetrotter. I see you get around to Dubai and in Asia and Middle East and of course in Mexico. So I love that part of you that you really are exploring and bringing service management and business maturity to the, those parts of the world. I'm curious though, like what do you see as trends? What are the sort of IT transformation trends that you see in those various regions? Yeah, it's really interesting because uh, there is a common factor across the globe and the common factor is technology. So it is like, uh, wow, we have the technology, we have uh, plenty of devices and then we have uh, plenty of offering. Of course, we are seeing hot trends on the side of cybersecurity, on artificial intelligence, on blockchain, on the crypto space, and on robotics. And I, I will say that those are the main hot topics right now. But every single area across the globe has a specific strength, you know, and it's like, you know, I, I have always respected a lot Europe, North America, USA and Canada, specifically speaking, like, like North America. Like uh, they, they have been using things uh, 20, 30 years ago, best practices, standardization. So, you know, I think that you are really good on that one. But, but if you go, for example, on the, on the robotic side, well, uh, Asia is, of course, one of the main areas of the world who are actually using robotics since the last, I would say, 20 years. But if we go to apply it robotics and especially speaking on service robotics, on humanoids and that kind of things, the main area to look for is, is the Middle East and especially for the UAE and Saudi Arabia, you know, those those kind of, uh, of countries are really growing. And, you know, since they are young countries, it is like if they were born digital. So they, they are just like getting traction and inviting citizens across the globe to go and live over there. And it is like, oh, I want a really high potential living in my countries. So they are actually doing that. And then you have, uh, for example, a UAE that has set the, the goal of being the AI number one country in the world by 2030. So I imagine that a, a really small country the, like the UAE challenging huge countries like, uh, like the US, like, uh, of course, China, that they are way more ahead on, on, on the AI side. So that's that's really interesting. And on the other side, we are seeing in, in Latin America is the potential of, of growing on the AI products and services is growing and growing. We have been deploying uh, uh, a lot of uh, robots in Latin America. So uh, I, I actually, you were there, I, I delivered a session on robotics and AI in the US. And it is like, OK, where are you already using all of these robots in Mexico and, and some of the attendees was like, what? Are you really actually using this? So a lot of countries are, are, are willing to adopt this, this kind of, of, of services. We are launching service robotics. We are bringing a new humanoid to Ecuador in next next month. So, you know, it's quite, quite small country and, and that's very interesting. So that's why I'm always willing to, to, to travel and to learn from every single perspective. Yeah, yes, perfect. I mean, that diversity in culture, I love that, that um, the way that you pointed out that perspective, how, how our industry benefits from different regions, exploring things at different times. And hopefully, you know, those of us that are curious and want to connect, um, 
we end up learning from each other and it ends up pushing its way around the globe. And I love that, that point that you make that the UAE is small, but they're challenging these big giants because technology doesn't care what size you are. You know, <laughs> it's totally yeah. fascinating. Yeah, amazing, right? Yeah. And I, I love the point you made about digi they're like a digital native. They're growing up with this technology as, as like being part of their lives. Um, and so they, they, of course, have this digital native perspective that yes. I think a lot of the younger generations as they're coming into this industry also have that same expectation. Well, every industry, really, they also have that expectation. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You also mentioned the skepticism that I saw the same thing in the room, right? That people were sort of, they were aghast that, that this would even be a thing. Um, but robotics and AI are clearly a passion of yours. And I think that it is the way that the industry is really going. So why don't you give us just like a quick summary? What, what is your team doing with robotics and how are they using it to deliver services and outcomes? Yeah, it is really interesting. You know that I have a really uh, a strong background on IT service management. In fact, working with IT4 books, being the lead architect and that kind of things. But the next step, it was like, okay, that this is really great. And, and you know what I saw communities across Latin America, they say, hey, Mauricio, it is great to understand uh, all of the strategies, best practices. That's, that's awesome. But what about the next step? How can we bring this into the ground level? You know, it's not like just procedural stuff, practices, and it is like, how can we actually enable products and services by using advanced technology? So one of the key things that I saw, it is like, of course, uh, AI, everyone is getting into AI. Every single organization is getting into hyper automation. So I said, okay, that's good. So I started exploring on, on robotic process automation, started exploring on, on, on some uh, chatbots development and that kind of things. And after that, I got a customer who, who uh, five years ago, he asked me to go and then he said, hey, Maurice, I want you to help me with uh, service robots. And I was like, ah, that, that's good with humanoids. That's perfect. I have never done that, but let's work on the strategy. And then he said, no, no, no. I, I do not need you on the strategy side. I, I need you because I already bought a 45,000 euros robot and it's already stored in my uh, garage right now. And, and, and it's like, I don't know what to do with that. I, I bought it six months ago and it's like, really? It's in the, the, the organization storage area. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. And he was the, the, the head of innovation. So he said, Mauricio, in fact, my, my, my job is, is, is at risk, is, you know, if they know that I made, and I said, okay, this is another big opportunity for, for me because now I understand that there is an interest in Mexico, in that case, in Mexico for, for service robotics. So I started doing my research, traveling to, to Russia, to Asia, to Middle East as well, just to, to see who will be the, 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 the right partner to, in order to, to start building the robots over there and then bring them overseas. And we found that uh, I really love robotics because it's the, the, I would say that it's pretty much the maximum expression of uh, AI mm. because the, the, the service robot allows you to, to mix every single kind of uh, artificial intelligence that you have. For example, in service robotics, what, what you need is, for example, neural language processing. So that's a complete uh, whole domain within AI. So you can actually be a service provider only on NLP and that's it. So uh, on the other side, uh, we need a lot of computer vision, and that's a whole new domain within AI. So you need computer vision. On the other side, we need, for example, uh, autonomous. So we are using LiDAR sensors, understanding how even uh, autonomous cars are using LiDAR, except uh, with the exception of, of Tesla cars that they are using computer vision by cameras. Uh, the most of the autonomous cars and service robotics are, are using LiDARs. And, and even on the, on the industrial robotics, they are using LiDAR. So it is really interesting because you can actually mix everything, every single AI domain with mechanical parts, with some circuits, you know, with some AI development. And then we have uh, Mexican AI's development who are great because, you know, when you work on the AI models for a service robot, if, if the guy who is behind those uh, algorithms is me Mexican or Latin American, they will print their souls into their robot. So 
they can start uh, engaging with you like uh, you will never find in, in any other place in the world, you know? It's like joking and answering you with uh, typical phrases that we use in Mexico and that kind of thing. So I think that that's something that on the cultural uh, uh, side, when we're mixing advanced technology with cultural uh, stuff like this one, Oh, you are you are creating a, a, a whole new level of high technology. And that's exactly what we are doing right now. I love it. I love it. That's such a good point. You know, we have these biases that we have. So let's make them good ones. You know, let's make them charming and conversational and and humanoid. I guess is the best yeah. way to say it. Yeah. So what are some That's of true. the outcomes that you're seeing like that customers are trying to achieve with these robotic platforms? Yeah, you know, I, I, I think that at, at the beginning it was quite hard to try to explain and, and, and to bring the awareness into the market, especially because we started previous to pandemic, then pandemic, of course, changed the, 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 the game. But we got back on track and we started by, of course, delivering some sessions on every single place I was delivering a conference, a robot was with me. And then the, the audience, it was really cool to see the audience, how they start engaging with the robot and they say, OK, so I can use these for conferences. Yes. And after that, OK, Mauricio, can you bring this to the to my hotel so the, the robot can be the hostess? Yes, for sure. So we brought the robot and then beer factories. Hey, Mauricio, I need a robot to showcase my factory. Can you bring the robot to my factory? And I said, yes, I will send it to you. And the good uh, thing is that the robot is not going to drink your beers, so no worries, <laughs> I will send it to you. So we have been working on launching new products and uh, a, a new products. Just imagine a, a beauty company, which is uh, Lancome. So they launch it because every single company is, is trying to get a, a, a tech company. So they are launching a new concept that is called it, uh, Beauty by Tech. And, and it was like, wow. So they are bringing really, really advanced uh, technology in order to scan your face and uh, match that into your products. So our robots are, are helping that campaign to, to launch this uh, beauty by tech. So it's, it's amazing what one, what, if you tell me, could you describe with one word what your, uh, your uh, robots are doing? And I, I will say for, for describing my robots, I will use the word versatility. You know, they can be used on so many cases that uh, it is like fr from the retail store on the health services in a hospital or uh, with doctors inside their offices or or you know in retail pretty much on a in any single place we can use nlp computer vision autonomous and with that we can build anything we want so we have used the the, the robots on black fridays in, in mexico so plenty of people and they are interacting with the robot instead of with, with person when we are seeing the pandemics, of course, that's very convenient. So, you know, that's pretty much what, 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 what we are seeing. So uh, we are getting too much traction on that side. And of course, on every single place that you turn on the robot, it, it is like a magnet. It gets traction of the attention of every single people in the room. So it's, it's, it's really interesting to see how this technology is capable of getting the attention of the consumers. And, and that's something that every single organization is looking for. Wow. I love that you said you're getting too much traction. What a great problem to have. Um, and your, your point about COVID is fantastic because, you know, if you've got a greeter at an organization and they are literally greeting everyone that's coming into the building, that that's a risk right now. And so having a humanoid robot perform that task, it just kind of, it just makes sense. And, and yeah. like you said, there's so many use cases and it, it all comes down to your imagination, your, your ability to visualize and understand, like, how can this impact my onboarding process? How can this impact training, tours, that first um, engagement that people have with your company, you know, making sure that they're, they're feeling welcomed. You could scale so many different processes using humanoids. Yeah, that's true. And, and you know, and, and considering, for example, on the IT service management space, what we have seen is one of the main issues is to get the right strategy on the multi channel and omni channel strategies within the organizations. And when we are enabling robots, then they said, OK, now I need to manage the robots like if they were products and services. And I said, yes, that's true. And this is going to be an additional channel of communications for you. So you will consider into your omni channel strategy this robot. It will be connected into your ticketing system. It will go through incidents, through requests, through change, through configurations. 
you are going to be into your CMDB, the CI, everything, you know, and it's like, wow, that's how the high technology should be considered before you even buy one, one high technology box, you know, it's, it's like part of the strategy. So this is where, where we are mixing and matching the, the how do you need to design the right strategies in order to bring the right advanced technology into your organizations. And once that you uh, transition, once that you get this high technology into your operations, then it must be managed like any other product or service that you are uh, offering. So that is something that uh, sometimes because of the excitement, the organizations are just uh, missing that. And it is not, no, 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 this is pretty much exactly the same that you have been doing with your service management, enterprise service management, IT service management uh, the, the last uh, 10, 10, 15 years. Yeah, it just looks different, it sounds different, and it speaks like 40 languages. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So where can people go to connect and learn more? Well, they can visit uh, our uh, web pages. It is bpgurus.com. BP is from best practices, so bpgurus.com. And you will be able to find a anything you need and how we are actually using this AI, RPA, uh, and robotics together in order to enable products and services. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining, Mauricio. Good talking to you. Thank you so much. It was really good, really good being here with you. Thanks for the invite, Matt. No problem. And for our audience, thanks for hitting play. I'll see you around the way. I'm your host, Matt Barron. You can find me on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook as Matt Barron. Post a review, send feedback, send it to me directly, matt at ticketvolume.com. Subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platforms. And thank you for listening to Ticket Volume, a podcast powered by Invigate.